I will talk now about uh, a few of the distributions of discrete random variables. So some of the, so we call this, we can refer to this as, you know, just talking about some family of probability distributions or, or discrete probability, probability distributions, okay? So the, f the simplest possible uh, probability distribution is known as the Bernoulli distribution, and we have seen it already, okay? So the Bernoulli distribution, okay? So the Bernoulli distribution corresponds to the simplest possible random variable that has just one of two possible outcomes, 0, 1. Okay, so imagine that you have x, random variable x, that takes one value from 0, 1. Sometimes we refer to 0 as failure and 1 success, okay? So basically it's a random variable that takes one of two possibilities, 0, 1, uh, false, true, failure, success, all of these are basically the same, okay? So we say that if I write something like this, if I say x, this symbol here, like the tilde, Bernoulli, P, this, this is in English saying that x has a Bernoulli distribution. What this means that x can take one of two possible values, 0 or 1, with P being the probability of 1 or success, P is the probability probability of success, okay? So P of X equal 1 is this P, and of course 1 minus P has to be the probability of failure. Okay, so P of X equals 0 is 1 minus P. So this is the probability distribution of a Bernoulli of a Bernoulli distributed random variable, or we sometimes we refer to it, the experiment that gives rise to this as the Bernoulli trial. Okay? And we have seen this before, for example, when I was talking about random graphs, Erdos-Rainy graphs, and when we take two nodes and decide whether to put an edge between them, that is an example of a Bernoulli trial. So we toss a coin with probability P of success, we add an edge, and with probability 1 minus P, we do not add an edge, which we consider as failure, okay? Now, let's look at the, at the properties of this distribution here. So if X is, is Bernoulli distributed with probability P, what is the expected value of X? Well, the expected value of X, remember the formula that it is we sum over every possible value and times the probability of that. So it can take prob a value 0 with probability 1 minus p and value 1 with probability p. This gives us p, right? And if we want to look at the variance of x, we can use one of the formulas that we have seen. And here I will use the formula that x minus the mean Remember, x minus e of x. In this case, we know that it is p already. This. Okay. So here now, when x is 0, this, this is 0 minus p squared, probability of 0, plus 1 minus p squared, the probability of 1. 0 minus p squared, this is p squared, and the probability of 0 is 1 minus p. And this is 1 minus p squared, and the probability of 1 is p. And we can simplify this. If you simplify it, you will see that this is p times 1 minus p. Okay? So, if I want to summarize, if I want to summarize for a Bernoulli random variable, so if we have x is a Bernoulli distributed random variable with probability P, then we have P, the probability of success, and 
the probability distribution p of x is given by p for x equal 1 and 1 minus p for x equal 0 and the expected value of this random variable is p and the variance of this random variable variable is p times 1 minus p so these are the character characteristics of a Bernoulli distributed random variable okay so the expected value is p the variance is p times 1 minus p the next distribution that's of interest to us and we also have seen it is known as the binomial distribution okay where does the binomial distribution appear imagine that you have a sequence imagine that we have a sequence of n independent Bernoulli trials Bernoulli trials and we are interested in we are interested in counting the number of successes of successes in this sequence in the sequence okay so Again, imagine that you have a coin that with probability P gives us heads and probability 1 minus P gives us tails. And I toss the coin n times. And I'm saying, what is the probability that the number of heads is K, right? So if we look at X being, X being the number of successes, then we have of course x can take any of the values that between zero and n right it can be no successes that's zero it can have one success two successes or all the way to to n and what is the probability distribution of a Bernoulli, of a binomial distribution in this case we write that x is distributed according to binomial distribution with two parameters n and p n is the number of of trials p is the probability of success in each trial what is the probability distribution that p of x equals k what is the probability that we have k successes again we have seen it before if you generate a random if you generate a random n bit vector and you ask how what's the probability that you can have k ones in it we said we have to look for all, every possible way of choosing k possibilities from this n. For these k possibilities, we have to have a success, so with probability p to the k, and for the remaining n minus k, it has to be failure, okay? So this is the probability distribution of a binomial, uh, the probability distribution of a binomially distributed random variable. Now, what is the expected value of a binom but the bin uh, binomially distributed random variable. Well, if we want to use the formula directly, then we have to sum over every possible uh, k here from 0 to n. Let me write it cleanly. k from 0 to n. k times n choose k, p to the k, 1, time, one minus p, n to the k. And now you have to simplify this, okay? But an easier way to think about it is that x, you can view x as the sum of n independent random variables, each of which, each of these xi's is Bernoulli distributed with probability p for i equal 1 to n. Okay. Now, why is this important to view it like this? Because now we can use the linearity of expectations, and I can say that the expected value of x is the sum of the expectations from i equal 1 to n. 
but this each of the xi's is a Bernoulli distributed random variable and the expected value of that is p so this is from i equal 1 to n p so this gives us n p okay so the expected value of a binomially distributed random variable with parameters n and p is n p okay and now you see here where the linearity of expectation made my life much easier than trying to simplify this formula with the, with the binomial coefficients in it. And what about the variance? I remind you that the variance of the sum of random variables in general is not the sum of the variances. For that formula to be correct, for the variance of the sum to be the sum of the variances, the random variables have to be independent. Now, we, it turns out that we are lucky in this case because these x1, x2, all the way to xn are independent. So here I can actually still use the same formula that tells me that this is the sum of the variances of these random variables. And the variance of each one of them is, I remind you that this is n times p times 1 minus p, okay? Because the variance of a Bernoulli random variable is p times 1 minus p. Okay? So if we have a random variable that is distributed binomially with parameters n and p, then we have the following, that the n is the number of trials p is the probability of success probability of success and the probability distribution is given by n choose k p to the k 1 minus p to the n minus k and the expected value is n times p and the variance is n times p times 1 minus p okay so this these are the characteristics of a binomially distributed random variable. Okay, so Bernoulli variable is just ha ha the, is a variable that can take one of two possible values, zero or one, failure or success. Probability of success is p. If we look at binomial uh, binomial distribution, it corresponds to repeating the same Bernoulli trial n times, and now asking question about what's the probability that we will see success. K, exactly k times okay so another one that also relates to running a uh, in a sequence of n of n uh, Ber bernoulli trials independent bernoulli trials we still have a sequence if you think about a sequence of n independent bernoulli trials where p is the probability of success one interesting question is, we want to count, count the number of trials, the number of, of trials, until, or to get to the first success, okay? To get to the first success. So if you toss a, if you toss a coin n times and I'm, uh, I'm interested in the the number of times until I get the fir the first success or the first heads, well the first heads could be immediately at the first toss, or the first toss is a failure and then the second one is success, in which case the number of tosses is two, or I might have failed the first five times and then in the sixth time I succeeded. In that case, the value of the variable is six because it took six tosses until I saw success. Okay, so here when we talk about the geomet, this is the the probability distribution of such a variable is what we call the geometric distribution. Geometric distribution, and we write x is distributed geometrically geometrically geo geometrically with probab with n where n is the number of of uh, trials and p is the probability of success and when i write what is x 
the probability of x equal k, I'm saying what is the probability that it will take k tosses until we see the first success. So think about it like this, is that if you want k, sec if you want k tosses until you see the first success, so this is all the way to n here, and this is the kth time, and this is k minus 1, and this is 1. So we want the first success to be here. This is the first success. Well, if we want the first success to be here, then all of these have to be failures, right? So if these have to be failures, then the probability that x equal k, that the number of tosses until we saw the first success, is that the first k minus 1 have all been failure, so 1 minus p to the k minus 1, and the last one, the kth one, was a success. So it's 1 minus p to the k minus 1 times p. This is the probability distribution of a geometric distribution, okay? So when I write x, x is distributed geometrically with parameters n and p, I am saying that the number the the number of in some sense i'm saying that the probability that it will take k tosses until i see the first the first uh, success is has the geometric distribution which is given by 1 minus p to the k minus 1 which i'm saying the first k minus 1 tosses are all failures and then the kth toss gives me a success okay now as before, what is the expected value of this and what's the variance of this, okay? Uh, the expected value here, it, we have to derive it based on making some results of, that we have seen before about the sum of geometric series. So let me actually call, let me, because I don't want to use 1 minus p too many times, if I want to use, let me call 1 minus p, just q, okay? So q p plus q equal 1. So p is the probability of success, q is the probability of failure, okay? So we have the following fact that if I call s of q the sum of the, of the geometric series, q to the k, let's say, or q to the k, where k equals 0 to infinity, this sum is 1 over 1 minus q, okay? This we had seen it before. The sum of the, of the series q to the k, where from k, from k equals 0 to infinity, is 1 over 1 minus q. Keep in mind here that q is, bit, is, is smaller than 1 in this case, okay? I want it to be smaller than 1. Because if q is 1, this is basically we are saying that if q is 1, Q is the probability of failure. We are saying that the probability of failure is 1, which means the probability of success is 0, which means you will never see, you will never see a, a success, okay? So this is why it's very important that we assume Q is 1, is smaller than 1, sorry. In this case, S of Q, the sum, the, this infinite sum from 0 to infinity is 1 minus Q, okay? Now, sorry, I, I, made a, I made a mistake here. I made a mistake that it's not the geometric distribution, is the, the n doesn't factor in it because I am not, I'm not saying that I'm tossing the coin n times and what's the probability until I get the first success. Actually, I wanna, my question of interest is that how many times do I need to keep tossing this coin until I see a success, okay? So... I apologize about this. The n should not factor here. It should be just geometric with given p, okay? So the parameter, the only parameter for the geometric distribution is p. Because if p, just think about it, that if p is extremely low, if it's 0 0.0001, you have to keep tossing it for a long, long time until you get the first success, okay? So the geometric distribution, just to correct something I had said before, please keep in mind, the geometric distribution has just one parameter, p, okay? Now, again... Keep in mind this, this formula here that the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of q to the k is 1 over 1 minus q when q is smaller than 1, okay? So now I can, I can look at the following here. It's take sq and take the derivative of it, okay? So let's take the derivative of s prime, okay, s prime of q. If I take this derivative, I am taking basically the derivative of 1 over 1 minus q, right? 
because s of q is 1 over 1 minus q. If it is the derivative of 1 minus 1 over q, the derivative of this is 1 over 1 minus q squared. Okay? But also this, the derivative, I know that this sum, s of q, is basically this sum from k equals 0 to infinity of q to the k. This is s of q, so I want the derivative of this sum as well. Well, this derivative now is k q to the k minus 1 from 0 to infinity. And this equals, if I want to look at it slightly differently, if I take it from 1 to infinity, k q to the k minus 1. Okay, Of course, because I'm taking derivatives here with respect to k, I'm treating k as if it is continuous here okay so it's a continuous value because we are just taking derivatives okay so if i if i do if i have this so if what i'm saying is that this the left hand side here and the right hand side are equal so 1 over 1 minus q squared equals the sum from 1 to infinity of k times q to the k minus 1 okay so then we can use these facts to try to derive the expected value of a geometrically distributed random variable. So now it is from, this actually, from 1 to infinity, k. This is the possible values that it can take. So a geometrically distributed random variable can take values 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to infinity. Okay, so it's k times the probability that it's equal k, which is, in this case, we can take it q, which is 1 minus p, to the k minus 1 times p, which, again, we have seen it already, 1 minus q squared p. And this is 1 minus q is p, which is, this is p squared times p, which equals 1 over p. Okay? So the expected value of, of this, of this uh, geometrically ran uh, distributed random variable is 1 over p. We can do similar derivation for the variance, and I'm not going to show it all, but you will see that if you do similar derivation, you will get that the variance is 1 minus p over p squared. Okay? Now, it should make sense to you look at this here. The expected value is 1 over p. If the, if the probability of success is 0.5, if you have a fair coin, and I ask you, what is the expected number of tosses until you see success? On average, how many times you need to toss the coin until you see a success? I'm sure you're going to say two, right? Because if it's probability have to see success, probability have to see failure, if you toss it twice, on average, you are expecting to see a success once. So one over P is that probability. If, if the probability of success is 0.1, one over P is 10. Well, if the probability of success is 0.1, on average, if you toss the coin 10 times, you are going to see success once. So it should make sense to you intuitively that the expected value of a geometrically distributed random variable is 1 over p. Okay, so if I want to summarize, if for, for a random variable that's geometrically distributed, geometrically distributed with parameter p or probability p, here we have again p is the probability of success. As before okay p of x as we said is 1 minus p to the k minus 1 p and here k can be 1 to all the way to infinity in some sense and the expected value is 1 over p and the variance of x is 1 minus p over p squared Okay, so these are the characteristics of a geometrically distributed random variable. Now, geometrically distributed random variable, again, we are talking about the number of times of tosses until we see the first success. Okay, but now suppose I'm asking, I'm, I, I generalize this. Instead of just saying the first success, I say, what's the probability of uh, or the count what's the probability of of a certain number of tosses until i reach k successes not just the first but k successes where k could be one two three seven whatever okay in this case 
So now I'm talking about again a sequence of tosses or or this actually not sequence of independent Bernoulli trials. And we are interested in count the number of trials until we see k successes. Okay, not the first one, but any k, okay, a k equal one, k equal two, and so on. So then the probability is then we say the probability, if we, if I denote this by a random variable x, the probability that x equal k, I can think about this really recursively. This is basically the probability that we saw success in the kth trial. Say success in the kth trial. And at the same time, and there were k minus 1 successes in the trials before. Okay. So if I want to have the, the number of trials until I see k successes, then we are saying that we see a success here. This is the kth success. This is the kth success. Okay, whatever the number here. But all the, the all these trials before, we saw k minus 1 successes. Not all of them are successes, but in all these here, we saw k minus 1 successes. Okay, so this probability, the probability of, let's say that, the probability here that, let's say, x equals, let's say, L, give, and we have k here for k successes, is L minus 1, k minus 1, 1 minus p, L minus k, and p to the k. Okay, so it's very important to understand here what I'm saying. So I'm saying the probability of x equal L. So here again, I made a mistake here. We don't want this to be K. We want it to be L. Probability success. So we want the, sex, the K successes in the first L tosses. So this will be the Lth toss here. And these are, there are L minus 1 tosses before that, and we have K minus 1 successes, okay? So if I, let me draw this figure again here. And actually, let me replace this here. Let me draw it once more carefully. So if we keep tossing the coin here, or doing this Bernoulli trial. So I'm asking, what's the probability that I need L tosses until I see K successes? This means that if this is the Lth toss, and this is L minus 1, and this is 1 here, I want to see success here. If I want to see success here and I want K successes, then in the first L minus 1, there were K minus 1 successes as well. Okay? So in the first L minus 1, we have successes. This now takes us back to the binomial distribution where I have if this takes me back to the binomial where I have from the L minus 1, I have K minus 1 successes. For these K minus 1 successes, we need the, each one of them to be success. So P to the K minus 1. And the other ones are all failures to the L minus, minus K. But also we have the K, the Lth toss or the Lth trial was a success. And that's a P. And this is what gives rise to this here. Okay, so this is the distribution of what we call a negative binomial distribution here, or the function of a negative binomial distribution. Okay, so if I want to write it clearly here, P of X equal L, this is the probability that the number of Bernoulli trials trials until seeing 
k successes. Okay, this is what this means. And again, the function for this is the L minus one choose K minus one, one minus P to the L minus K and P to the K. Okay, as I said, this is called negative binomial distribution. Okay, and we can do derivation as before, and I am not gonna do the derivation uh, more here, but if I say that I have x that is distributed as negative binomial, binomial with the two parameters, k and p, k is the number of successes that we are interested in, P is the probability of success in each of the Bernoulli trials. The probability distribution here, the probability distribution is, so P of X equal K is, again, L minus, sorry, this is the probability of X. I keep making the same mistake. Probability, let me write it cleanly here. Probability of x equal L. What's the probability that we need L tosses until we see k, k successes? It's the L minus 1, k minus 1, 1 minus P to the L minus K and P to the K. And the expected value of uh, negative binomial distribution is K over P. And the variance is k times 1 minus p divided by p squared, okay? So if you look at this and compare this to, uh, to the geometric distribution, the expected value here is, the, is multiplied by k. For, for geometric distribution, it was 1 over p. Now it's k over p. The same thing with the variance. In the case of geometric distribution, it was 1 minus p over p squared, and now it's multiplied by k. Okay, so these are the characteristics of a negative binomial random variable. Again, it's very important to understand the meanings of these variables. Bernoulli basically has one of two possible outcomes, failure and success. R binomial, we are talking about we did the, the trial in times, and we ask the question of what's the probability of a certain number of successes. For geometric, we are asking about the number of tosses until we see the first success. For negative binomial, we are asking about the number of tosses until we see k successes. Okay, So if k equals 1, the negative binomial distribution takes us back to the geometric distribution. Okay, So negative binomial with k equal 1 and p is exactly the same as geometric with p, okay? Because now we are asking about the probability of the certain number of tosses until we see the first success. Okay. The last distribution I want to talk about is a very important distribution. It's, it's slightly different from the other ones that we have seen before, and it's known as the Poisson distribution. And again, this distribution is also discrete distribution for discrete random variables. Poisson distribution. Okay. The Poisson distribution is very powerful and very useful in many scenarios where we talk about events that are very rare. So when we talk about a scenario where, think about it as where you have what we call rare events. Okay, so rare events are events basically that are extremely unlikely, extremely unlikely to occur simultaneously simultaneously or within a very short period of time or within a very short period of time okay 
if you have such a scenario, usually we use the Poisson distribution, okay? So again, think about it. I'm talking about a scenario or a case where multiple events can happen. What do I mean by multiple events? Imagine I'm looking at a printer and I'm thinking about the jobs that come to the printer, okay? So I'm, I, let me think about two jobs that come to the printer, one after the other. You, I mean, what's the probability that they come, you know, one after the other or simultaneously, that two jobs are sent simultaneously? What's the probability that two students in Duncan Hall are sending two jobs to the same printer at the same time? It's a very unlikely event, okay? Think about phone calls. What's the probability that you receive on your phone two calls at exactly the same time? The same thing with email messages, the same thing with traffic accidents, the same thing with mutations in DNA. We usually, it's, we usually assume that it's very unlikely that at the same time, in the same, in the same process of DNA replication of a cell, that two positions have mutated. We assume usually that that's a rare event, okay? So if you think about these rare events, again, you can think about them as, you know, job arrival, okay, at a printer, for example at a printer, or you can talk about phone calls or emails. Again, think about it. What's the probability that you get two phone calls at the same time or two emails at the same time? Think about it as, you know, virus attacks. Okay. And think about it as, you know, natural disasters, floods and earthquakes. Okay, these are all very rare events. Rare in the sense that two earthquakes happening at the same time is a very rare event, okay? Yes, I mean, and we can think about, about uh, you know, earthquake and the aftershock or, and, and, and so on, but I'm talking about two major earthquakes happening in succession and immediate, immediately one after the other is a very rare event. The same thing with floods and so on. So in all these cases, we use... We use a Poisson distribution to to reason about so to reason about the number the number of again rare events occurring within a fixed period of time within a fixed period of time okay. Now, the rate at, at which these events come, or we say the average number of events, we usually use the probability. So if I want to talk about the Poisson distribution, Poisson distribution, we have, we have the, the lambda, which is the frequency, the frequency or the average number of events. Number of events. Okay. The probability distribution here, when I say what is the probability that x equal k, what's the probability that within a fixed amount of time I will see k such events? What's the probability that I will see k earthquakes within a fixed amount of time? The probability distribution now looks very different from what we have been seeing so far. It's the natural base here, E to the minus. And we have this to the K over K factorial. Okay, and K here can be 0, 1, 2, and so on. As I said, this is the rate of it or the average value. And it turns out that also the variance is the same thing here, okay? So this is the Poisson distribution. Again, these are the characteristics of the Poisson distribution. If you think about a scenario and someone is asking about a scenario where they don't tell you that use the Poisson distribution to represent this, but question, the question is really of, of the form, you know, let's say that the form that you know, uh, you know, customers at some company are initiating new accounts 
at some average rate of accounts per day, okay? So people opening bank account, let's say at 10 accounts per day. And now you wanna ask the question about, let's say, what's the probability that, you know, six or six new accounts are, are six or more new accounts are open that day. We are not telling you what the probability distribution here, but you need to be able to reason about it, say, well, if the probability that the average number of accounts per day is 10, then that, that corresponds to a rare event. And I can now use the Poisson distribution. Okay, so if you are trying to model a scenario where the events, multiple events can happen, event of the same type, like again, arrivals of emails or phone calls or jobs at the printer. So you have multiple of these events that but they are rare that if you take a fixed amount of time, the number of such events happening is very, very small. That's then, and you want to ask questions about that and you want to reason about them from a probabilistic perspective, then the Poisson distribution is the right distribution to use for those. Okay, so this is the family of uh, discrete random variable distributions that I was going to talk about here. The first one, I remind you, we had the Bernoulli. the Bernoulli and it's parameter, parameterized just by P, the probability of success. Then we saw the binomial distribution where it is parameterized by N and P. N is the number of Bernoulli trials where each one of them has probability P of success and these are all independent. And then we saw the, the geometric distribution, geometric distribution where we ask about what's the probability of seeing the, what's the probability of the number of tosses until we see the first success. And there we give just the, pro, the, the quantity P or the parameter P, not N here, because we are saying, imagine that you can toss the coin, you know, any number you want. It's not, it's unbounded. You can keep tossing it until, keep tossing it until you see the first success. Unless the, the probability of success is zero, eventually you should be seeing a success, okay? I repeat, if the probability of success is zero, no matter how many times you toss that coin, you are never gonna see success. So we are not interested in that. But this is why P has to be greater than zero here. But if the probability is greater than zero, then if you keep tossing the coin, eventually, ultimately, you are going to see uh, this success. So this was the geometric distribution and basically the waiting time, the waiting time until the first success. But if we wanted to say what's the, we want to count the number of times until we see the first k successes, not just one. We talk about the negative binomial. Okay, and for the negative binomial, we have two parameters now, k and p, where k is the number of successes we are interested in. P is the probability of success in a trial. And the last one we saw is the Poisson distribution. And the Poisson distribution has just one parameter, which is the rate or the average number of events within a fixed amount of time, within a fixed period of time. And here we just have that rate or that average number, okay? So these are the five distributions that are the most popular in the case of discrete random.